I'm with Lee Sear, CEO of Svedi Solutions, and Svedi is the standard setting body for business and enterprise in the UK. Now, Lee, you're also the report author on graduate, uh, graduate recruitment in SMEs, um, and this morning at the Graduate Employability Conference, you were talking about some of the findings from your report. Mm, yep. Now, what are, the, what are the headline stats that stand out from, from that piece of work? I think there's two or three headline figures. I think, firstly, there's a... If we look at SMEs in the UK, about a third of employment is in businesses with less than 49 employees. But what we know is that only about 20% of graduates end up in those small firms, where in comparison, over you know nearly half of graduates end up in companies with more than 250 employees, even though they account for a very, very small proportion of the overall stock of businesses. So there's some sort of mismatch there between what the stock of businesses look like and where graduates are ending up. And, I mean, you made the point that this isn't a, um, an unknown fact. It's been something, it's been a gap that's kind of appeared over the last decade or more. Mm. Um, so why is it that, A, things haven't changed mm. around that? And, B, what, you know, what, if any, change do you see in terms of graduates getting into uh, employment in SMEs? I think there's a couple of reasons why the, that, that gap you know, is not closing. I think firstly is that there's tensions on either side, both for graduates and SMEs. You know, so SMEs we know recruit in different ways to larger firms, but I think there's most probably a, the, the supply side getting an understanding of that. Uh, so things like professional development for careers professionals, that issue most probably hasn't been addressed as effectively as it could over the last 10 years, which is why that gap maintains itself, because there's a lack of information on either side about the value and the benefits of graduates working in SMEs, but also as SMEs as employers for graduates. Now you talked about that, the issue of there being you know, big information gaps mm. between employers and graduates. So that begs the question, what's the role of the career service mm. in all of this? And, and what would you see the to-do list being for career services over the next 18 months or so? I think there's three things. Uh, I think firstly, there's raising awareness by getting out into that local business community. And it's, some institutions do that really well, but they tend to be the exception rather than the rule. And that obviously reflects some of the challenges that universities are facing in terms of what their role is in this current economic climate. But I think that's the first key one, being active, that they're out there actively engaging with their local business community, those small businesses who tend not to know how to get into universities. So I think that's first. I think that's secondly, it's about providing space for those two groups to come together. So why not just get a room, get some SMEs in that room, get some graduates, don't give them any rules or regulations about how to use that space, so they can just talk to each other, so they can develop an awareness of how they can add value to each other. And then I think thirdly, there is some issues around definitions of employability. So, you know, career services widening how employability is defined, and it's not about your ability to write a CV, it's about your ability to understand that, that sort of like commercial awareness. As a graduate, what value do I bring to a business? What difference can I make to their business? Lisa, thank you very much. Thank you.